This is the Big Deal feature on the Breaker.News podcast. And joining me on this edition is Alan Mullen, who is Chief of Staff to Daryl Plekis, when Daryl Plekis was the Speaker of the BC Legislature. We want to look at the first batch of Cabinet posts. We're going uh, alphabetical order, where we're assuming that the basic Cabinet skeleton that uh, existed before will be what we'll see going forward, uh, the basics. Now, agriculture, that was Pam Alexis's uh, portfolio before she got defeated in the election. Uh, I'm thinking that David Eby is going to look in the Okanagan. Uh, there were the, was the problem back in the summer with uh, the financial problems for BC tree fruits. There was a lot of questions about uh, the Buy BC program. And, you know, EB really does have to send a signal to the interior after really running a campaign that focused on lower mainland as well as Vancouver Island. So I'm thinking that he's going to go with Harwinder Sandu, the Vernon Lumby MLA, who's been reelected to take over the vacant spot in agriculture. What, what do you think? Yeah, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, and, you, and you're right. When when Pam Alexis was the Minister of Agriculture, there was there was issues, especially in the interior, uh, you know, in, in the fruit-growing uh, capital of, of, of Canada, my goodness. Uh, but I'm actually thinking that uh, EB might consider putting Lana Popham back in. Uh, Lana was incredibly popular uh, and well-liked in the agricultural community when she was Minister of Agriculture. Uh, she did a lot for the berry farmers in the Fraser Valley. She made frequent trips to the Okanagan and around the province. And she was incredibly well liked. And she was very, very good at that job and very, very good in that ministry. I would not be surprised uh, to see David Eby put Lana back in uh, to agriculture. Now, I'm thinking that for Attorney General and Children and Family Development, that David Eby is going to stand pat. Uh, Nikki Sharma in Vancouver Hastings uh, was the Attorney General before the election, and Grace Lohr in Victoria Beacon Hill uh, in Children and Family Development. There was that uh, photo op during the campaign when uh, Chief Stuart Phillip from the Union of BC Indian Chiefs uh, said that she has to stay in that role because uh, he says that she's made some headway that other ministers uh, previous have not. Um, do, you, do you agree with those? I do indeed. Yeah, I think you're spot on there, Bob. I think that Nikki Sharma is a no-brainer for Attorney General. She's she's done a, a, a you know a good job uh, in her in her previous term in that role. Uh, she's a lawyer. She is uh, you know Vancouver Hastings. It's it, it, it's a good role. It's a good fit for her. And I and I think David uh, the Premier really likes her in that role. Uh, and I also agree. Grace Law is is you know the perfect spot is is children and family development for her. And like you said. Uh, there's been lots of photo ops and lots of sort of promotion about her staying in that role. So I think, you know, it, I, mean, I mean, I think the Premier will obviously listen and look at that and say, yeah, we're, we're going to keep those two the same. I, th I think you're right. And now in citizen services, uh, I'm reluctantly saying that EB is going to keep George Chow from Vancouver Fraserview in that role, even though George Chow is really in the the, the twilight of his political career, and, and as someone also who has drawn attention because of uh, his uh, friendly connections to the Chinese consulate and the various United Front groups that support the Chinese consulate and the Chinese Communist Party in Vancouver, um, there are questions about how George how George Chow was uh, handling the cybersecurity problem, the the hacking that happened earlier this year. We still don't have uh, a full accounting of exactly what happened, but uh, he was a minister who really wasn't there for the news conferences that were really handled by Mike Farnworth, Solicitor General, and by David Eby. Uh, but yeah, it is a, a ministry that it really is run by staff. Uh, it includes the cybersecurity function, includes the, the, the government's procurement function. Uh, do you think that George Chow could stay in that role or is there someone else that uh, could fill in, could uh, jump into that role and take over from George Chow? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I think I, I think George Chow probably won't stay in that role. I, I, I'm not even sure if he'll stay in cabinet, if I'm being perfectly honest, for, you know, the reasons that you just stated. Uh, citizen services is, is not the type of ministry that you want somebody that's, you, you know, sort of, complicated or that's going to bring sort of negative attention. We saw that under John Horgan's government with Ginny Sims. And that didn't end well. 
and she had to be removed from that ministry and ultimately removed from cabinet. Uh, I'm thinking Jagru Brar, uh, you know, the member for for Surrey Fleetwood, would be a good fit in citizen services. Uh, I think the ministry would suit him and it would suit his talents. Uh, so, so my my bet would be on Jagru to to uh, be appointed minister of citizen services. Now, education is vacant because of Rajna Singh's defeat in Surrey and Surrey Green Timbers. Uh, I'm thinking that Nina Krieger, who won in Victoria Swan Lake, she took over from Rob Fleming in that riding, that Nina Krieger would be someone who would go into education. She has a background, actually, as a, you know, a Holocaust Memorial Museum manager, uh, someone who... The, the NDP went to because, of course, after the Selena Robinson uh, departure, uh, you know, the firing by, by David Eby, really, over that uh, whole uh, awful episode where, where Selena Robinson later said that she was the victim of, of internal anti-Semitism in the caucus. Uh, we know why Nina Krieger was, uh, was recruited to run for the NDP. And I'm thinking that uh, because of that, partly because of that, that she would be an ideal person to uh, enter into the, the education for portfolio. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think you're spot on exactly what you said. I, I, I'm with you on, on Nina being appointed Minister of Education. I think she would also have a, a fairly steady hand when dealing with the with the, uh, the the you know the teachers union, which is sort of the biggest challenge if you're going to be Minister of Education. So I think... Uh, my money's on Nina, the uh, same as yours, Paul. And Rob Fleming, of course, uh, he retired as the Minister of Transportation, but he was previously a Minister of Education. And, and another incumbent in uh, North Vancouver, Lonsdale, very popular in uh, the NDP, in the NDP caucus, uh, Bowen Ma, who was the Emergency Management Minister. I'm thinking that she'll stay as the Emergency Management Minister, but you've got a different idea. I do. Yeah, I think... I think uh... Bowen's going to be, she's going to remain in cabinet, in my view. I think he's going to be uh, in, in a different portfolio, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, I think Terry Young, the newly elected member, uh, you know, former Vancouver police officer, I think he is a good fit for emergency management. The reason I say that, and I'll talk about, you know, who my pick is for, for Solicitor General a little bit later, but I think the, the, the Minister of Emergency Management needs to be a good complementary you know, sort of figure to the Solicitor General, Minister of Public Safety. I think I think that would be great for for uh, for Terry because you know he's a new member, but he's got a lot of experience in uh, emergency management, crisis management, that kind of stuff in his previous role. Um, I I think Terry is is uh, is a very good spot for emergency management, and I think uh, I think the Premier might might put him there. Now, 2025 is going to be a big year for the uh, energy ministry, uh, the ministry that is responsible for BC Hydro. This will be the year of of uh, cutting the ribbon at Site C, the biggest uh, infrastructure project in British Columbia history. You know, as we're talking, Site C is coming online. Uh, one of the generators is online. The, uh, the reservoir is full. Um, it's it's on its way to being fully in service. And so it'll be important for a minister to be involved in that. And uh, I'm thinking continuity. Josie Osborne from Mid-Island Pacific Rim, that she'll stay in the portfolio. What, what do you say? Well, I was actually thinking Ravi Kalon uh, from Delta. Uh, Ravi has been Minister of Housing in, in uh, you know, this, this previous government. Uh, I think, you know, I think Ravi needs to sort of move on from the housing portfolio, in my view. Uh, and I think this could be a good one. Uh, I think with the with the site C, you know, like you say, the ribbon cutting, Ravi is is polished. He's well spoken. Um, I think there's there's some other sort of conflicts uh, that have arisen uh, through his tenure as, as Minister of Housing. And I think it's you know, in, in my view, it's time that the Premier sort of moves him. I'm not saying move him out of cabinet. He's very valuable in cabinet. Uh, but I think energy is a good landing spot for him. Yeah, you do uh, raise a good point there because of uh, what the Conservatives, uh, you know, focused on during the election campaign. Ravi Kalan's sister is with a company, a new lobbying company, government relations company, and his brother is a developer over on Vancouver Island. So that might be a little too close for comfort. I'm sure the Conservatives will want to carry on their prosecution of him in the legislature in question period if he stays in that portfolio. But if he was shuffled over to energy 
that would uh, solve that. Um, the next in line is environment. Uh, now, George Heyman retired, and George Heyman was also the MLA for Little Mountain, and uh, Christine Boyle was his successor. She won that riding. Uh, she was uh, really the voice of the environment uh, for the One City Party, uh, an ally of the Green Party Canada, uh, the Green, Green Party councillors on Vancouver City Council. And I'm thinking that uh, she might be slotted into environment. It would be a bit of a, a controversial move, uh, mainly because of uh, mainly because of her family. I mean, she's uh, you know married into the uh, the Klein and Lewis clan, uh, people who are uh, heavily invested in uh, anti uh, oil, anti gas, anti development, uh, decarbonization. And if Christine Boyle became the Minister of Environment, how much clout would she have at the cabinet table? Uh, she would definitely please the Greens within the uh, caucus, uh, the environmental movement within the caucus, but she might be a little bit controversial. But I'm thinking that David Eby might go there anyways and appoint her as the Environment Minister. Yeah, I actually think you're right. Uh, you know, I think it, it probably would be controversial. I think there's going to be a lot of sort of appointments that may be a little bit more controversial, but I think you hit the nail on the head when you said uh, it would be very pleasing to the Greens. Uh, you know, even though the NDP have a majority, it's a razor thin majority. And, you know, uh, David Eby has said, you know, very recently that he's been having very good discussions with the Greens. Uh, you don't necessarily need them to sign a confidence and supply agreement, but you do need to keep them on side. And, you know, obviously you don't want the speaker sort of breaking ties if at all avoidable, so uh, you want to please them, and I think I think uh, that that uh, you know environment portfolio is very obviously very important to the Greens, and I think they'd be they'd be quite pleased with Christine Boyle. So I think uh, it makes sense uh, politically. It makes sense. So I, I agree with you. I think uh, I think that's probably where she'll land.